And welcome back to this week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Nashville Democratic State Representative Brenda Gilmore and syndicated talk show host Steve Gill. Welcome. Happy holidays Thank to everybody. You. We are in it already. Hard to we believe, are. isn't it? As we begin the holiday process, let's talk a little bit about the homeless issue that we, we saw Don Worrell talking about. We're three years into this recession. We've only seen this problem get worse. Obviously, organizations like the Union Rescue Nashville Rescue Mission are great organizations and, and help, but really the solution is jobs, on, kill, lower unemployment, bring businesses here, isn't it? Well, I think that there are a, a number of solutions. Jobs is certainly one of them. Resources is another. Mm -hmm. A huge percentage of those people who are homeless are veterans. A lot of so them are, you right. When they've served our country and they come back, we need resources uh, to meet their needs. So I think that we need to look at it from a holistic approach. Jobs, resources, housing is another huge issue. Most of the time when people are homeless, they have, you know, they have just nowhere to go. So housing is important as well. You know, and it's a, it's a complete societal issue as yes. well. I mean, we've got such a, a kind of divided society now where it used to be in the old days when somebody would lose their job or something, they would move back to their parents. They had a lot of family around. We're now so spread out that we may not have family that can help or, or aren't really there. A lot of the homeless, as Brenda mentioned, are vets, and many of them have mental health problems, drug problems, alcohol problems. Mm -hmm. And then you've got some folks that have just been caught up in the economy. Right. Uh, Safe Haven uh, Family Shelter here in Nashville does a great job keeping families together in their homeless program. But again, they have limited resources. The Rescue Mission did a great job uh, over this week with uh, Tracy Lawrence helping with his Ten uh, years turkey been fry. Doing it, right? I mean, 500 turkeys that they put out there. Uh, but I think the challenge is we're in still for the long haul with this economy. The Fed is still indicating that we're going to see 9, 10 percent unemployment for the next couple of years. This is not going to go away very quickly and we just need to kind of gird up for a long haul. And the biggest growth industry, unfortunately, for homelessness is women and their young families, young children. That's and true. that makes it really tough because as they become homeless, there are fewer and fewer places for women and children as opposed to men. That's, r that's right. And the number re one reason that women are homeless is because of domestic abuse. And Tennessee is the has the fifth largest uh, cause of domestic abuse in all of the country. So again, this is another area that we need to address. Homelessness is is huge. Yeah, the good thing is people pay attention this time of year, but right. it is an issue year round. That is year round. And frankly, you know, even when the unemployment rate was four or five percent, we had a homeless issue in this in this country. That's where you're not going to deal with the the drug abuse, the alcohol abuse, some of the other issues simply because of what the economy is doing. The economy just exacerbates it. The final report is in for the May flood. Not a lot of new information, but a reaffirmation, as it were, of really some serious communications problem, miscommunications, total lack of communications. Those are going to be fixed. I guess the question is, do we feel enough was addressed? The Corps, you know, kind of again said, we did the best we could under the circumstances. Is that good enough? Well, usually I think the Corps does very good, and we certainly don't want to beat them up because of all of the good work that they've done in the past. However, in this particular situation, I think that they have to be honest. And certainly the citizens of, of Nashville, I believe, in Tennessee, believe that they just didn't do enough, fast enough. They let out too much water when it should have been let out over a, a mm -hmm. longer period of time in smaller amounts. They didn't therefore, anticipate. And therefore it contributed to the flood. I, I think one of the more disturbing things I heard is that apparently, uh, even though it's the Army Corps of Engineers, they apparently clock out on the weekends. Uh, I'm not sure I want our national security apparatus to clock out on the weekends, and if they are, I don't think I want al-Qaeda knowing that. <laughs> As we head into the holiday season again, travel begins to increase. We're hearing more and more complaints from TSA, screeners, the body screeners, aggressive pat-downs. We heard there's going to be some changes, but really not in, in the screening aspect and the pat-downs. They're going to continue, but it's going to be looked at. A lot of people are not happy. Some, though, say... If it protects us, it's worth it. Others are saying it's too aggressive. It's an, you know, an infringement on my rights. I think it's very aggressive. However, when you look at the alternatives, I think that I would have to go along with the pat-downs. In fact, there are surveys that have been conducted that says 71 percent of the people will go along with the uh, pat-downs rather than to look at what some of the uh, alternatives are. So therefore, I've come down on the side of inconvenient, maybe a little humiliating, but let's go with the In this down. day and time, I guess, you know, you want to be safe. I think the problem is, is really multifold. First of all, it's a direct violation of the Constitution. You, you don't have the right to reach inside people's pants simply because you've got government authority and you've got guns. Uh, the second, I think, bigger issue is the fact that it's not working. The guy that's developed the machines, that sold these, these we-can-see-you-naked machines right. to the TSA, admits that it would not have caught the underwear bomber, which is the reason we're supposedly doing this. Mm -hmm. It is ineffective. They're not catching terrorists. And the terrorists 
terrorists have to be laughing their rear ends off of what we're doing to ourselves under the guise of security the israelis have a system that targets terrorists not innocent people and we need to adopt their system i tell you what i was appalled at at how much money that these people who have developed these machines are paying to the lobbyists. So that kind of makes you a little suspicious. Yeah, they're the ones that lobby strip search. <laughs> <laughs> we heard from the likely speaker to be, the nominee, the GOP speaker nominee, Beth Harwell, talking about her priority is to obviously save money, create jobs, and hopefully attract new businesses. And she wants to not limit but encourage lawmakers to not introduce 40, 50 bills, maybe keep it down to four or five, which would save a lot of paperwork, state mm -hmm. fund. Think that's a good idea? I think it's an excellent idea. In fact, every year we foul somewhere between three and 4,000 bills, and probably maybe six to 700 of them get approved each year into law. So I think that's an excellent idea. And most important is we have got to focus on job and job creation. So I agree with her wholeheartedly. We've got to get that unemployment rate down to a manageable level and get people back to work. I think limiting the bills is a great idea. Unfortunately, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And when your constituents start, start calling saying, hey, there ought to be a law on this, when the lobbyists start saying, hey, can you put this bill in the hopper, you're going to see them still hit that 40, 50 number. Uh, I wish they could do more about it, but that's going to take uh, some spine from the constituents <laughs> as well as from the legislators. The, the other big problem, I think, though, is that I, I don't think they should overreach on this. We're going to fix the jobless pro pro uh, problem in Tennessee. I agree that ought to be the priority. I think we've been saying for a long time they ought not be focused on social issues and guns and other things. Jobs ought to be the main focus. But they shouldn't set them up for failure because Tennessee isn't going to drop the national rate from 10 to 5 percent. Tennessee really can't do that much. And due deference to the legislators, they can restrict what we spend. They can control our state budget. But you're not going to see Tennessee at 4 or 5 percent unemployment rate while the country's still at 10. Steve mm -hmm. Gilbrenna Gilmore, appreciate your time and your insight.